Welcome to RV Talk Radio. Here we talk about RV living, RV lifestyles, and RV travel. We also celebrate the RV lifestyle that gives us the chance to do outdoor activities that we couldn't do in a normal lifestyle. So thanks for joining us. Grab yourself a cup of coffee, a cup of tea, and let's talk about RVs. Hello, everybody. This is Rob Scribner from RV Talk Radio. This is episode 67. And we really have an important show today because I'm going to talk about pet safety again in the desert living. Now, the last time I talked to you guys, I talked about rattlesnakes and pretty much that's it. Well, we had the privilege of actually talking to a doctor uh, over at Palisades Veterinary Hospital over in Fountain Hills, Arizona. And she sat down with us and did a video interview, but we also did an audio of it. And she discussed uh, what the rattlesnake v- vaccine's all about. And then she also went into heartworm disease down here. Also, some of the other critters we have down here for... Um, like our frogs are dangerous to our pets down here. And not to mention, large birds um, can actually hurt little dogs too down here. So, uh, very serious stuff. So, um, it's actually a great interview. I want to get it up right in uh, the beginning of the show to make sure everybody listened to it. So, please, I urge you to be patient and listen to the entire interview. It's only about 14 minutes long, and then I cut it off from the other part. And uh, there's also a video version of this that you can see the doctor in the office uh, actually explaining everything why we have Cinder there. So uh, I want to also set up, uh, let you know that we are sitting in a... um, the clinic and cinders on a table and so while we're talking you might hear us actually referred to cinder and cinders right there on the table so if you get the opportunity please uh try to watch the video version of this which will be out later in the week after this show so anyway, uh should be a uh, very educational if you really love your pets and you're going anywhere where it's desert living whether it's uh, up north, even uh, eastern Washington or eastern Oregon, and then down in the lower Gulf states, there's critters and stuff. There's a lot to learn here. So please, patiently listen and learn and, and protect your pets. You know as much as I do that Sherry and I love our pets to death, and we want to pass this on. And if this interview saves the life of just one dog, then we've been successful. And believe me, it will save your pet's life, just knowing the information that we're going to talk about. So, without further ado, kick back, grab a cup of coffee, and here's the interview. Today I have the pleasure of talking to Dia Hessian from Palisades Veterinary Hospital. Is that right? And we're in Fountain Hills. And Cinder is here getting examination. And we didn't think she'd come up at the table, but she did it all by herself. <laughs> Is this a spoiled dog or what? And today, I wanted to talk to a doctor about the rattlesnake vaccine. And there's some myths that go along with this, so hopefully we can clarify some of this. Now, we're doing this as a courtesy to all the folks coming down here, especially our deers or snowbirds <laughs> coming down here. And Cinder's going to get her booster shot today, and we'll show that later. But anyway, uh, we're going to let Cinder do her thing so you'll hear some sounds. And uh, please just be patient with her. We are in a little <laughs> a little room. So. Anyway, so uh, I wanted to ask you, first of all, what is the rattlesnake rex- vaccine? So the rattlesnake vaccine was developed about 10 years ago. It's been out for quite some time. It works by stimulating the pet's own immune system to develop antibodies, which are the organisms that help fight off infections, similar to other vaccines that you get. But it tries to stim- it tries to stimulate antibodies that help bind the toxin that the snake injects at the time of a bite. And so by binding the toxin, we can reduce, hopefully, the side effects of the bite and also um, buy us a little more time between when we're bit and when we seek medical care. Gotcha. 
So one of the myths is it's like sometimes people think a vaccine is a keeps you from getting hurt. So what I want to make sure people understand is when a dog gets bitten, um, it doesn't mean not to take them into the hospital. Correct. So um, even if your pet has been vaccinated with the rattlesnake vaccine, you do still want to seek medical care. And we do still give antivenom to treat these guys. Uh -huh. um, we do still give these guys antivenom to treat them. The um, What we are hoping is that the amount of antivenom and the effects from the bite will be reduced because of giving this vaccine. Now typically when they get bit too, they also get an antibiotic a lot of times too, is that true? It really depends. Um, it depends on the bite, the location of the bite, and um, complicating factors. So antibiotics are not always given. Okay, gotcha. So um, just to uh, make sure, it's, even if we get the vaccine, it's critical we still get the pet into an emergency. It is still critical that you do have your pet seen. Yeah. And the other thing is, like for, for the Fountain Hills areas, my understanding is about three clinics that are 24 7 that are emergency hospitals for pets. Is that correct? So in Fountain Hills, we do not have a 24 hour emergency facility. The closest 24 hour emergency facilities, if you're located in Fountain Hill, is going to be at um, Paradise Valley Emergency Clinic, which is at Scottsdale Road and Shea. Gotcha. The next is at um, Animal Emergency, or Blue Pearl is their new name, and they're at Scottsdale Road and Acoma. And then if you go down the B line, we're going to be looking at VCA Emergency, which is on Country Club and Mesa Road. It's gotcha. the old Mesa Veterans so, Hospital. Uh, one of the things is like, like not all RVers come to this area, but it, it, I would say it's definitely a good recommendation to make sure that as soon as you get into the area, to be aware of where the 24-7 clinics are. Yes, it is a good idea. Um, we have brochures. Clients can come in. If they want to get brochures from one of the emergency facilities, we have those so that they can have that at the ready. Great. So um, typically, uh, uh, you were telling me earlier this, uh, uh, whether you have a big dog or a little dog, how... Um, how is the vaccine administered? So the vaccination is a sub-Q, which is under the skin vaccine. It's given in large breed dogs, it's given once um, at the initial series. So this is the first time the dog is receiving the vaccine. It's given once and then it's boosted in four weeks. And then it's given every six months. For the larger dogs? In the larger dogs. In the smaller dogs, it's given their initial series is not two, but three vaccines. So they're given three vaccines and then they go to the every six month booster as well. Wow, that's interesting. So what's the uh, general cost of the vaccine? Uh, it depends, you know, certainly it's gonna vary from hospital to hospital, um, but their range is usually 40 to $60 for gotcha. the vaccine. So uh, I heard, uh, I, I, I was gonna ask you, is the anti-venom is very expensive if a dog does get bit. Unfortunately, yes. And so anti-venom has fluctuated over the years and it really depends on the supply. It's the same anti-venom that they're using in human hospitals. So many times we're competing with human hospitals for the product. Oh, wow. Anti-venom can vary anywhere from $500 to $1,000 per vial. Wow. And it's not just the cost of the anti-venom, it's the cost of the fluids, the hospitalization, the monitoring. Um, we uh, do need to monitor these guys for swelling and local tissue death from the bite. We also do worry about um, clotting problems, and that's the biggest concern we have with snake bite dogs that have been bitten by snakes, is we're monitoring their clotting times and we're not monitoring their proteins. Yeah. Um, so there is addition, there's, there's treatment in addition to that $500 to $1,000 antivenom. Gotcha. So one of the things uh, I know we talk about on uh, RV Talk Radio is when you come down here to be vigilant. Mm -hmm. And even in, in, uh, we just had in Fountain Hills, right in our dog park, a dog got bit. And that's what kind of motivated these shows. And uh, so, uh, would you agree? <laughs> Vigilance is. The oh, first I think thing. vigilance is yeah. anywhere. Um, you know, the Sonoran Desert is unique. We have a lot of desert dangers that um, that people really aren't used to um, being exposed to. Yeah. Uh, between our snakes, which do come out in the early spring, 
uh, and will are still out until it starts getting pretty cold. They don't hibernate usually until October, November. Um, we do have to worry about our other wildlife between the coyotes, the javelina, um, the bobcats, and then we do worry about our birds of prey, especially for our small breed, small breed pets, our I dogs and cats. Bird runners could be a problem, aren't they? Um, road runners are carnivores, but I'll be honest with you, we don't, um, I don't think I've ever had a road runner attack, so. <laughs> I heard they were aggressive birds. The other uh, animal I want to ask you about was uh, the desert frogs. Right, what so Colorado they? river toads are commonly called bufos. Uh -huh. They come out during our monsoon season. I think that's when they're breeding season. I'm not a herpetologist, so I can't tell you. Yeah. But they do, ex um, when they're stressed or handled, they excrete a toxin in their skin. They have glands on their skin. And that does cause, um, can cause um, the dogs to develop heart arrhythmias and um, can make them very ill. And we have had some dogs die from it. Wow. So certainly. And I've seen those frogs a lot. So. Right. And a uh, Criarius dog's going to want to go over there. And the first thing yeah. they do is stick their nose on and then lick them. And so prompt uh, emergency treatment is immediately washing their mouths out with water uh -huh. and then getting them into your um, closest veterinary hospital. Okay. When you wash their mouth out, remember to point the hose out of their mouth because <laughs> some people want to point the hose down their mouth and the next thing we have is an aspiration pneumonia because these dogs have swallowed too much water. So yeah. you want to rinse out, not yeah, rinse in. And, you know, when you're in a panic situation, you just got to keep a clear head. Right. Yeah. So, the last thing I wanted to kind of bring out is we're talking about vigilance, but down here, like a lot of us, I'm from Washington, so we don't have the critters like we, you guys have down here. So one of the things that I always tell people is you got to be responsible with your pets and making sure you pick up after your pets. And there's people that will literally avoid that and, and let their dogs run free in lots and in the desert so they don't have to pick up after their pets. And that's where I think you're going to find all these critters. And so I just want to, I think you probably would agree that being uh, vigilant and being responsible will probably keep our pets alive. Being responsible, being vigilant does, does um, equal a happier, healthier pet. And healthier, healthier usually means longer lived. Yeah, and I think leash. that, right, and I think that there are groups of people that don't have pets. And um, those people that don't pick up after their pets kind of ruin it for the rest of us who do have our pets. And want to take our pets places and they've been told they can't because other people haven't picked up their dog dirt so yeah. you know we we just need to realize there is a small population of people that aren't pet friendly we feel sorry for them but um uh but we do need to be cognizant that maybe they that, that for us to be able to take our pets the way we where we want to we need to be realistic and under and, and watchful on what our pets are doing and clean up after. So anyhow, uh, and I want to thank you folks so much for allowing us to interview uh, everybody here. The, the staff here is fantastic. Thank so you get a chance to come to this particular, I, this is my favorite uh, animal clinic and uh, Cinder is always comfortable here. <laughs> I have never been able to get Cinder to lay the table. She <laughs> realizes she's been being filmed, yeah. and since I understand yeah. she's the mascot of the show, she feels that she should be in during the entire filming she's episode. Never done this, so I'm so proud of her. She's being so good, um, and and I want to make sure if you want the opportunity for us that are kind of ignorant, and I am one of them. What are some of the biggest uh, advice you'd like to give folks like us that's coming down to the desert? Uh, with our pets? I, you know, certainly it's to realize your environment, make sure that you're watching out for these critters and real and and um, realizing that there are preventative measures like the rattlesnake vaccine. You can also have your dog snake avoidance go through snake avoidance training and that's going to be the, the okay. ultimate the ultimate treatment is get the vaccine in case they get bit, do your snake avoidance training so hopefully they don't ever get bit. Um, we're big believers in um, heartworm prevention. We do have heartworm in this area. It's low compared to maybe down in Houston and the, the Gulf states. But unfortunately, with the migration of people from those areas, our area has been, our mosquito population has slowly gotten infected. So we do recommend heartworm prevention when your pet's down here. Not only does it protect your pet against heartworm, it's also going to protect you and your pet 
against intestinal parasites. Most importantly, roundworms, which are something that we can get and in people can cause blindness. Wow. So it's a simple procedure of giving your pet heartworm preventative once a month to protect them as well as yourself. Um, and the cinder, other, cinder gets all those treatments. Yes, I know. <laughs> um, the other thing is we strongly recommend, you know, some people do not want to do vaccines. They don't want to do all the vaccines that are recommended. They want to reduce the frequency of their vaccines. Certainly we understand and respect that. But we do feel that all pets that are seven years of age and under should be looked at by their doctor once a year. Just like you get a physical, your pet should get a physical. So we can note weight changes, um, lumps and bumps, and start tracking those things. Once they become over seven or considered a senior, then we really should be having your pet come in twice a year because we want to do preventative care. We want to catch these things early and treat them before they become uh, critical life life ending type situation. Right. That's super. So uh, we're going to wrap this up uh, for the interview. And uh, once again, thank you so much. You're welcome. And Cinder, you've been a great stunt dog. Cinder's been a great mascot. <laughs> yeah. And uh, Cinder's actually here to get her booster for the rattlesnake vaccine, which has been six months since uh, we did the program. And so we're glad. And we've had absolutely uh, no issues with the shot at all. She's never even been sick or sleepy or anything. She's so the after effects were nothing with her. Right, and unfortunately in some dogs we can have an after effect. The most common reaction is that they can get a swelling uh -huh. about five days after the vaccine, and it has to do with the carrying agent yeah. in the vaccine. And it's usually, a little bit yeah, here. they'll get a sterile abscess. They usually just need um, hot pack treatment. Occasionally we will we'll use antibiotics. But that's been the extent of reaction that we've seen with this vaccine. Yeah. All righty, well, I'm going to wrap this up. I want to thank you once again. This You're is welcome. a group from uh, Palisades Veterinary Hospital. I want to make sure I say it right. Fountain Hills, super people. We've been here several times with all of our pets, treated us well, educated us well, and I feel secure that we're taking care of our pets properly. So thank you very much. You're welcome. So it was just wonderful to have that doctor go through all those different uh, circumstances for us. I learned a lot. I'm hoping that you you guys all learned a lot from it. Uh, and after that, Cinder got her shot, and she also um, uh, got checked out. She's saying she's doing real good, uh, nice and healthy. Told me to quit giving her rawhides. <laughs> which would give her little ones, but apparently she says this is hard on her teeth and so in the digestive system. So, all right, I'm going to start knocking that off. So sorry, Cinder. But yeah, it was a lot to learn. There's a lot of things down here in the desert you need to know about. And I know a lot of you guys are snowbirds. You guys are coming down here from places where you don't have to worry about these things. But uh, can you imagine... What she was saying in that interview is if your dog got bit and you had to take her in, to get a anti-venom, it could be $500 to $1,000 a bottle. Then there's the actual being there at the veterinary hospital. Then there could be antibiotics. You're looking probably at a $2,000, $3,000 bill, and it could be more than that depending if they got multiple bites, they would have to have maybe an extra um, anti-venom. So it's the same stuff that humans uh, need if they get bit and so I, I, it's um, priced basically on commodity so yeah it could be very expensive it could financially really ruin your snowbird time down here so being vigilant getting that shot uh, being uh, hold on to your pet keep them on a leash I know some of you guys have dogs that are farm dogs and things like that and they just quit let, uh, you can't let them run loose around here that's where the critters are so granted, she's saying that during the winter, a lot of them go dormant, but it stays, you know, depends on how long it stays warm here. And if you guys are staying here till March or so, it could start warming up early and they could start coming out of their dens. And so, but we got other critters. We got the frogs down here and spiders and scorpions and, and all kinds of stuff like that. Um, and <laughs> it's, and if you have a little dog, you have even more concerns about uh, bird of prey. So yeah, lots of stuff to think about. So I'm sorry if I've done a lot of talk about this, but 
I know that if you have a pet, you're as passionate as I am about keeping them protected. There's also uh, things like uh, a desert fever down here type thing. If they get that sick from that, that still needs to go into the clinic and they can treat that with antibiotics. But you need to get them in. If your dog's sniffling, throwing up, coughing, things like that, get, um, get them into. They could actually get that. I think it's called desert fever or something like that. So... Anyway, yeah, there's a lot of stuff down here. But at the same time, it's a wonderful place. I know it sounds like we're talking about a lot of negative things. We're not. We're just talking about prevention. And so, uh, yeah, um, I hope in the comments below you can let us know that this has been informative to you. I know some of this has been repetitive. I keep talking about it. But I keep running into people coming down here who have never heard of this vaccine whatsoever. And it just shocks me. So uh, if you're listening to this show, you now know about it, how it works, how to get it, and what it costs. So let's move on. Thanks for listening on, uh, on our pet subjects. Well, I think it's time for me to show my age a little bit. And I kind of want to talk about something. And I don't know if it concerns some of you folks or not, but... And maybe it's the senior father, whatever it is in me, but you know, and you kind of hear me hint about this all the time. But what really concerns me is um, young adults using the RV life as an excuse to ignore old traditional uh, family growth, let's say. Now, typically, typically, most folks go to school, graduate from high school, either learn a skill, hopefully, or go to college. And so many I'm seeing now, even after they finish college, I know, uh, I, I feel that they're uh, uh, using the RV life as an excuse to not tackle the world and, 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 get a career and 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 so i see like living free and uh, uh roam the world and work camping and things like that and and that's fine and dandy but i th i think in the long run it's going to catch up with you and so i highly would like to recommend that yes this sounds so neat to have you know, not to be a traditional nine to five worker and stuff but um especially if you're single or just partnered up, things will change. <laughs> it's guaranteed. Uh, if you're single, a girl's going to come into your life or a guy is going to come into your life and your whole world will change. And if you want to have children and stuff, and that will all change. And, and yeah, I, and I'm a little more traditional too about having kids on the road as opposed to being in a neighborhood and having a pattern and having a uh, foundation uh, while they're going to school and stuff. Um, personally, I think that's the best way to go. But, um, you know, I guess, you know, times are changing. I, I understand that. But if I've seen folks that RV and actually have careers that are traveling all the time, and that's perfect. And then other ones I've seen that I think works pretty good is someone who waits does their school, learns their training, goes to work, practice that skill or, or, or education they got, and some of them will create businesses or be able to um, contract work all over the United States based off of that skill set that they learned in their 20s. And then RVing is a great way to go after that. But I'm seeing folks where they're just living on a shoestring and and, I, and and I'm sure they're happy and, and I've seen it with sailing too um, and maybe it's you know if they're just going with the attitude of yeah this is just going to go on for two or three years and then I'm going to go back to uh, the foundation of of the work force you might say um, I guess that's great but it concerns me that so many folks I've seen, and I'm seeing it, and they're usually the ones using, you know, I have channels and stuff, because they're not making traditional money, so the internet's another source of income for them. And so, and it is for us too, but ours is a sideline. 
And uh, so they're going out to, to try to build these big channels. People donate money to them and things like that. And um, it's just not a uh, formula that uh, what's it going to look like when you get and you know have kids, or what's it going to look like when you get older, and and uh, uh, things like that. And so it just concerns me that that part of our being. And I see it in sailing too, in boats, are excuses to not tackle the tough world of the workforce. And no, it's not easy, but there's nothing beats going out and working for an aerospace company or working for some technology companies and build up a base, put money away, get a 401k started that you can still contribute to after you leave. Uh, get a skill where you can apply that skill to other places. Learn how, you know, find out what it is like to own a home. <laughs> and, I mean, uh, yes, you know, you can RV and own a home. You can do both. Um, but I'm telling you, you're missing out. <laughs> if you think just going straight to an RV and freedom is the way to go, I have no regrets of 25 years of owning homes and having a foundation for my children and having a school that I was able to pick and, and allowing my kids to learn to integrate with public schools and public people and other kids and her, their peers, good, bad, or indifferent. I was proud of the homes I had. I was proud of the times I could sit in my backyard and grow things and uh, times where I actually had a little farm and had critters. <clears throat> excuse me and uh, I'm telling you that's not a bad life it's a wonderful life and this I will never regret any of that time where I was um, tied down to a house yes a mortgage yes um, but my children had full, their own bedrooms they had a yard they had kids to play with bikes to ride consistency while they were developing it wasn't until after they left that Sherry and I decided that we could change that structure and then it was only about it's then about her and I and not my kids and so I don't know I just kind of want to make sure that I send that message out I guess that uh, the old traditional nine to five American dream is a great life and it's not easy Nothing's easy. Of course, even trying to live in an RV and uh, fixing it up all the time and living on minimum income and being a minimalist isn't easy either. But don't write off the other so easily. It's um, It builds a foundation for you to be able to do all kinds of things when you get older. And I know when you're younger in 20, 30s, and 40s, I did it too, you try to ignore that fact that 50, 60, 70 is coming. And uh, if you ignore it, um, it's going to haunt you. And uh, anyway, so that's enough of that, I guess. But um, if you're listening and you're thinking of j just diving straight into RVing and, and using it as a scapegoat not to follow the, the, <laughs> the pack, you might say, um, not a good excuse not a good excuse at all you can rv still and you can uh, still have a home and you can still have a foundation and you can do extended rving and stuff like that but um don't be in such a hurry um trying to s beat the system it just doesn't work you can get away with it for a while and you might be lucky and all that but i can guarantee you things will change just like this youtube stuff and making money on the internet the way we are, it will change i don't know how I can guarantee it because I've been in internet marketing for 15 years. It's changed a lot in different ways. And if you're um, not flexible or you don't have the foundation to go with the next change, um, you're going to be out in the street. <laughs> so I guarantee you it will change some way. And what looks so great and fine and dandy right now, they're already talking about removing monetization for my youtube and 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 changes in that area so yeah it's and there'll be something else to replace it and people will figure out how to use that but uh t things will change it just always does it always catches up with you so anyway i guess that's all i have about that but 
Anyway, think it through, people. And, and, and if you're young, uh, the sacrifice doesn't seem like much when you're young, but it may be really big when you're older going, man, I wish I would have done this instead of that. Anyway, let's move on. Well, this brings me to the time that I got to do once a week is to one is uh, mention that we're now cons- uh, well, we're sponsored by Good Music Radio, which is an internet station which we actually own and uh, actually contributes to this show. And uh, I also want to remind people to take the time to contact us and tell us your stories, tell us your good, bad, or indifferent things. You can uh, even have argue with something I might have talked about. Um, I uh, I just bring it st- certain things up for discussions, uh, just like that last segment, and uh, love to hear from you. And we like to hear what we're doing good, and what you maybe like to hear us talk about, or what you like us to change. Um, you know, uh, I don't want to be like all the other shows, so we are what we are. But uh, you can influence what we talk about. And I know a lot lately it's been about pets a lot, but it's just been a great opportunity. We've, getting, we've been given so much information to pass on to you guys that uh, we want to make sure that pet safety gets out there because we'll move on to other subjects. Uh, but uh, do go to our website at uh, rvtalkradio.com. Go to the uh, contact page. And give us a holler. Nobody sees the notes. It just comes straight to us. You can go to our Facebook page of RV Talk Radio. Go to the top of the page where it says message and shoot us a note there. Or you can send me an email directly at rob, R-O-B, at rvtalkradio.com. And nobody sees that except me and Sherry. So, yeah, we'd love to hear from you. Um, And want to remind you, if you get a chance to go visit goodmusicradio.com it's an internet station uh, almost pure music uh, it's it's attitude is it's, as it plays music <laughs> is we're hoping that you can say oh man I remember that song so anyway we're thankful that we have that platform to support us and give it a listen also like to remind you that we do have RV talk radio stickers bumper stickers or window stickers they're really nice looking very appropriate easy to read um the uh, beautiful red white and blue we also have them for uh, rv travel buddy and uh, if you get a chance uh, we have a link down below in the description of how to get to them and also we'd love to have you take a look at our patreon and if you feel like uh, helping support some of our videos and uh in our platform uh we appreciate it uh people that become patrons or be getting a special treatment and actually behind the scene videos that kind of show you how we do what we do and it's not the normal videos that we would put out but actually the foundation of actually how we make them and what we do in the background and uh, we only share that with our patrons and also we also give them free gifts and anytime we get some new items for our store uh, we'll, our patrons will actually get a free if it's a new hat or if it's a new sticker or something new, uh, our patrons, uh, because they're kind of in a special group, um, will actually get samples of that stuff. And not to mention that we have the platform where our patrons can talk to us directly behind the scenes 24-7 privately. And they're of highest priority, of course. And we can, uh, we'll can easily answer questions and, and um we also have a board or a platform back there that we share just with our Patreon um, supporters. So, yeah, appreciate that. Anyway, let's move on to our next subject. I uh, want to also remind people that, and I've talked about this in other shows too, is make sure you guys know that our foundation of the show is the RV lifestyle and living the life in an RV and what it can do for you. Now we've talked to you uh, of the fact that you know we own a boat and we do a lot of trips. We went to Texas this year and things, and we have videos on that. And some people say, "Well, that's not RV stuff," and it's like, "Yes, it is. It's because we have an RV that we're able to do things because it, well, us for income wise, it uh, reduces our overhead, which allows us to play more, and that's what 
getting in our golden years is all about. And I guess I can't really say I'm in. I actually got chewed out the other day. It's like, you're not a senior. You're only 55. It's like, sorry, but I do have some of the issues of things, and it's going to only get worse. So <laughs> sorry if I'm not a true 65 senior. <laughs> not in that big a hurry. <laughs> but anyway, I do appreciate that. Uh, we've been talking about health care a lot. So, yeah, uh, occasionally I'll get a note. Someone's like, oh, just deal with it. It's just how it is. It's like, all right, well, yeah, that's true. I guess I got to deal with it. But, you know, we still want to hear alternative ideas. And so that's we appreciate that. So anyway, uh, what I did want to talk about was we get a lot of people that are be thinking about becoming an RVer. And, and yeah, some of them are one, two, three, or four years out before they're going to do it. And they're trying to decide what kind of rig they want, uh, if they want to go full-time, part-time, want to be s uh, snowbirds, things like that. And, and please, guys, with us, we don't have, just because Sherry and I have a fifth wheel doesn't mean that we're pushing fifth wheels. Uh, a lot of our people say, oh, yeah, we listened to you for a long time and we decided to get a motorhome. Don't think we'd be <laughs> disappointed. It's like, cool. Any RV is a good RV as far as I'm concerned. And based on your skills and how you can maintain it, that's up to you. But, uh, yeah, there's a lot of things. But uh, common comments about what Sherry and I like, we've had almost all of them. We've had a trailer. We've been happy with trailers, but they tend to be a little bit low on the storage. However, it benefits if you've got a truck that it allows you to enjoy the back of your truck and be able to store things there and not have a fifth wheel hitch in the back so there is a benefit to having trailers and trailers are getting bigger and bigger and there's some really cool ones out there fifth wheels are great because they to me sherry and i they feel more homey um, you can go to so many different fifth wheels and they all i mean they'll have several floor plans and a lot of them really feel like a little home and i found several times and sherry and i were looking at motor homes earlier this year and uh, they tend to still have kind of that same look um, they, you know, they kind of shuffle things around a little bit, but they tend to have the same kind of design. And of course, when you get into a motorhome, there's so much more technology and issues to deal with that uh, can break. Uh, but it, it happens in a fifth wheel and trailer too. So uh, they're all good. And then there's the Class Cs out there, and whether you go gas or diesel, uh, those are things you have to decide that are based off of your skills. Really, I mean, because even once you drive off the lot, whether you used or new, uh, you have to maintain that rig. And, and yes, you should always get extended warranties if you can. Uh, new, you get a one-year warranty typically, some too. Uh, so those things are all to consider. But also just remember, what is your skills and what are you willing to do to maintain that rig? Because eventually, uh, and, and by the way, I've seen a lot of people buy new rigs, and they, their first year could be a torture. Just things breaking and going constantly having to go back to the manufacturer to get something uh, or back to the dealer to get something fixed or replaced on warranty can really be frustrating, especially if you're trying to live in your RV. So, you know, you're going to have issues new or used. You, you just need to know that. But you really need to find out what kind of foundation do you want uh, I can't say much about how long a, a truck will last anymore because I've got a 2002 Ma, um, <laughs> Ford with the 7.3 uh, engine, and people are telling me that th that thing could live a you know go a lifetime. But I'm not all that pleased of what I'm seeing with the new trucks and all the new technology in them. So of course, if you're going to have a trailer or a fifth wheel, typically you're going to have a truck. If you have a motorhome, then then you're just dealing with a good family car that uh you just got to make sure it's towable and uh so that and and some guys folks are just uh they don't even do that they'll take a motorcycle and so yeah everybody's a little different so don't think there's a particular mold and don't think sherry and i only think fifth wheels is the way to go um there's times i wish i had a motorhome and and other times i'm glad i don't uh, I wish sometimes that, uh, now luckily Sherry and I brought both of our cars down here, so we have both cars, but sometimes he's like, yeah, this doesn't really make sense to be trying to go to Costco in a truck like mine when I can't get in the parking lot. And so, yeah, uh, we really hope every, uh, that what we talk about is uh, 
kind of generalized for everybody. And really, it's about the lifestyle with us. It's it's what you can do once you become an RVer. Uh, but yeah, we'd love to t talk about the different models. And Sherry and I have had the experience of all of them. Uh, I think the only thing we haven't really RV'd in, but I've been in, is like uh, campers. We haven't been in campers, and Sherry and I never had a pop-up trailer. Uh, but we've had the other three trailers, basically. Oh, we never did any van living either, so uh, or tour tour vans um, or camper vans, they call them. We've never done that. Um, we never had a Class C. We always we had a, a Class A. So yeah, that's our background and, and what we're all about here at the show is what we want to do is get you out here to enjoy the lifestyle and what it can do and how the people are and the communities and there's never ending subjects of, of what goes on here. And then the big thing is since you're an RVer, what can it do for you to extend the activities of things you love and enjoy? Those things that you might have given up, maybe you just like to read and have quiet time, or maybe you like to go hiking, or uh, maybe you like to play in the water more, go fishing. Oh, good old fishing. Um, there's a lot of things that your fifth wheel can, or your motorhome, sorry. Well, your RV, sorry. <laughs> Since I was talking about models, I got them on my head here. But uh, your RV can enhance all that stuff. And if you like boating, you can don't have to give up boating. You just have to do it a little differently. You can have even have a small little boat that somehow you can mount on the top of your truck or something. So uh, Sherry and I, we have a bigger boat that we actually move around separately, keeping up with where we're at. And luckily, we cannot hold still, so it's been really easy lately. But that could change. But yeah, you don't have to give up stuff. You just modify it. And the RV life is a great way to do it. And as you're getting time, you may be gaining more time to your life. And that's the more precious thing. Money isn't what we're looking for, people. It's time. Time is everything. That's the commodity that everybody should be shooting for. More time. And with that subject in mind, I also, um, I, I talk about this once in a while, but also to learn how to live for the now is if you're someone like me who's a visionary and's always got things in your minds and ideas and stuff and uh, where my wife is more analytical we can sit down and she can just say i am happy right this minute I, I, nothing i mean just the way it is not me i'm just like oh maybe we should do this maybe we should do that blah 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 so Sherry sometimes needs to be a little more co you know, pushed towards adventure. And I need to be more pushed to learn to be grateful and appreciate now. And time is one of those things that both of us wish we had more of. Uh, Sherry's um, and I both uh, uh, still fight that clock. I just, that clock, uh, just, uh, it's like we just did four days up at Lake Powell flew by and it's like i could have used a whole week easily i could have used a, a month uh and there's no way to explore an area in such short times i know how frustrating that is but uh yeah that good old time what a precious commodity and maybe if you could start especially you guys are getting ready to retire and say oh maybe i'll wait another year it's not the extra money is not going to help it's, it doesn't, and it just, it, what it's really doing is stealing time from you. And the commodity you should be looking for, especially after 55, is time. Time to do the things that make you happy. And yeah, it sounds a little bit uh, selfish, but only you can make you happy. And we've talked about that before. So uh, um, think about that. RVing hopefully will give you that precious commodity of time to enjoy the things that you enjoy in life and yes we still have our responsibilities and yes we still have bills to pay yes we have health things and stuff like that but even if you can gain 10 percent more time would it be worth it to you anyway food for thought Well, I had an observation here that I actually like to pass on to people that are thinking about traveling or going to travel, is if you're into your internet, and we talked about the different types of internet, but there's a little piece of equipment you might want to keep aboard your RV, and that's a router. 
And you say, wow, in a lot of cases, people just use the wireless that's available in a park. But some parks, like the one I'm in right now, have that you can get hardline. And you may have to pay like a dollar a day. And we do. We pay a dollar a day, so $30 a month for a hardline. Now, a hardline... Um, is great, but you know you need to bring it into the rig. Some rigs have wiring or LAN plugs in their RV, but a lot of them don't, like Sherry and I. So we actually, since we have a third air conditioner, a portable, going out the window, we have the window open and we have it sealed, but we can also bring a wire through there. So then I get this wire, and it's like, uh, all right, where am I going to plug it into my c computer? Well, I don't want to run a wire all over the place. So... You may want to keep on standby in certain opportunities, very rare, but more and more, you know, like this particular park we're in, Arizona, takes pride in having really, really good internet. And we have, this is the best internet I've had anywhere in any park. And uh, I have a hard line going to a router that distributes out to all of my devices in the RV, my laptops, my cell phones. Uh, our uh, tablets, uh, and then the other thing is we have Wi-Fi Ranger uh, on our rig, so a Wi-Fi Ranger to tap into it. I could run a wire straight to that, but it's an unusual place where I don't want a wire running along the floor to the outside land connection. So uh, I actually uh, wirelessly connect the Wi-Fi Ranger to the router, uh, which actually that actually is what powers all of our stuff and plus i have extra security that way uh so anyway so i hope that's a good piece of advice that in most cases you'll never use that router but if you get to a park that has hard lines and you really like to have good internet uh, a router will come in handy to keep in this keep it in the closet um uh, i don't think you have to get a real expensive one but you want one that it can be locked down is secured and it's a good one and uh, some of them will actually enhance the uh, the signal a little bit. But, yeah, um, just kind of figure that one out. So, <laughs> yeah, a router. And they're, I don't know, they average around 100 bucks, plus or minus, depends what you get. And just keep it in the RV. You never know when you need it. That, that also brings me to that. That's also how Sherry and I uh, run our printer. We have a Canon pr uh, wireless printer. Uh, I remember in the old days we used to have a printer with us, an Epson, and we had to run wires to it, and then uh, <laughs> we had more wires. But yeah, so the other thing that router will come in handy is you can uh, run your uh, uh, printer through it too. And then if you get a wireless printer, this is one less wiring mess that you have to deal with. So yeah, anyway, a little piece of advice. And last but not least, if you can keep good internet or get fairly decent internet, our home, what we call our landline, travels with us. So we use an IP or a, a, a VOIP um, uh, a voice over internet uh, uh, system, uh, which is Vonage. You guys probably heard of that. I think there's some other ones. Uh, I think Magic Jack or something like that does some thing with phones. But we actually have our business line for Cutting Edge Enterprises. Um, through a land, what we call our landline, which is an IP phone. And that's really cool because the IP phone travels with us wherever we go as long as we have internet. Even when I'm using my air card, I can still get my phone to work. Um, and uh, yeah, so um, I never actually told anybody that, you know, we have cell phones. And, but we also have a secondary line, which is our business line, that uh, collects uh, our normal um, business information and, and people that leave us messages and companies we deal with can contact us. And when that line, we give that line out only for that kind of stuff. And, uh, yeah, so I, in fact, occasionally you probably heard me uh, a phone going off in the background during recordings. And, of course, it's the business line. And we try to catch all that stuff, but... Pfft, it's just, uh, it's real. And that's the other thing that, um, like when we did the interview the other day with the uh, uh, vet, she was like, well, do we have to make sure it's quiet and nobody walks in and all that stuff? And it's like, or dogs barking and stuff. And it's like, no, that's what's neat about this platform, about 
when you do a podcast and if you're doing a YouTube channel. One of the reasons why people like to watch YouTube is it's real. It's not made up. Um, yeah, it's not the whole, I mean, there is a little bit of script and all that stuff in some of the stuff, but uh, if a cat meows in the background or phone rings or uh, kids are yelling in the background, uh, it tells you it's real. It's real life. And uh, that's why a lot of these videos aren't perfect. And uh, sometimes, uh, like the photography, we'll grab a camera real quick because we only have a quick second to capture something before we get plowed over by an 18-wheeler. <laughs> <laughs> the, so we may have shaky cameras or the picture isn't exactly right or maybe we didn't consider the fact the sun was in our eyes. And so uh, that's the cool thing about finding a channel that's telling you the real story is, yes, there will be flaws in their audio and there will be flaws in their uh, uh, filming. And, and that's kind of why I urge people that are thinking about doing this kind of stuff don't worry about being perfect. And, of course, the longer you start doing the more you get a little bit um, uh, more anal about your shots and your sound. And uh, But eventually you have to just tell yourself, this is real, and that's why we do this. And so, and our audience is usually pretty forgiving. Occasionally we'll get somebody in there going, well, you could have put a different mic up, or the sound was terrible. And it's like, well, we know that. Well, at least we do, but it was... We captured something at the time that uh, we didn't have time to set up special mics. We didn't have time to put reflectors up. We may not have had time to uh, grab the right camera. And so, yeah, but um, once you get realize that, then you'll see these people are trying their best to give you what it's like out here and, and, and enjoy the adventure and the events with us. And so, yeah, uh, fun stuff. But, yeah, if you ever think about doing this, it's not a world of perfection. It's a world of at least telling your story. Last but not least, the last I'm going to bring up is uh, uh, I keep seeing videos from folks who are living full time that kind of are folks who are similar to what I talked about earlier in the show of making income on the internet or making income on the road. And um, First of all, nothing beats having a skill, having a degree, and having experience. Period. Now, all the rest of it sounds so neat and fine. Oh, you could put links of uh, Amazon and make a commission, or you get money from your channel, or you can write a book. Yeah, write a book. And, uh, and those things do produce income. I know. I've been in Internet marketing for a long time. But if you have a lifestyle of what I've talked about earlier of having a career and things like uh, that's piddly money. I'm, I'm sorry. Um, and if you enjoy nice things, which is okay, you can enjoy nice things and nicer cars and you don't have to fix up used things all the time. Uh, there's nothing, I mean, <laughs> that's the lifestyle that we like and, and, I don't want to constantly sit outside having to fix things and repair things and, and things like that. Uh, uh, but to have the other alternative lifestyle, a little bit of having someone else do it for you and stuff, you have to have good income. So in work camping, I can guarantee it is one of two things. One, you'd be paid minimum wage or you're trading your rent for work. And those will work in some great sit you know, in situations where – um, for convenience and, and maybe just like to get out in the community. And if you're retired, sometimes it's just an excuse to go and be involved in the community. Uh, and if you can reduce your costs and things like that too. But you'll basically, are, if that's the only thing you think you're going to live off of going out in the world, um, you're going to be um, living on a shoestring. It's just the reality. And where... Uh, there's exceptions to every rule where someone has a channel that explodes. Uh, there's a few channels out there that have exploded with really good followings. And so their income is better than most. Most people only have, uh, if they're, you know, 200 to 500 followers, that's amazing. We have a lot more than that, but still doesn't. The numbers are not the kind of numbers that you would want to consider living off of. And uh, anyway, so 
this misconception of, oh, they sit there and they, oh, you can make income doing this. You can do affiliate marketing and you can earn money from your videos and you can do some branding and get a sponsor and do pay, uh, Patreon. Um, the big, bigger channels can really benefit from some of those. But as they're sitting there telling you how great it is and all stuff like that, um, they have some unique stories that make them popular. And uh, there's other factors that I won't go into that makes their channels popular. And, and in some cases, there's channel out, out there that we're all waiting for someone to have the next disaster. And it's like soap operas. And so uh, most of us are not going to have channels like that and blogs like that. And so <laughs> anyway, uh, if you want to live in a poverty state kind of lifestyle and I'm in minimalist at the same time and you can live on a shoestring and be happy nothing's wrong with that but don't get some idea that there's a magical thing out here to do and the money will be just as good as your normal job that you're leaving it's not it's just not that's reality and you can just you know feel free to argue with me all you want on that unless you've got a channel of 25,000 50,000 on up those numbers will start getting a little bit more significant but generally, most channels do not have that and will not get that. And you may not have that look or you may not have that charm or <laughs> in some cases, there's channels out there waiting for the next disaster, the soap opera stuff. Um, and, uh, and I've also seen some of these other channels and, and you got to remember that the RV, uh, the videos and podcasts that you hear are a show that entertainment and so there is another side to the story is what you don't see on film you need to know that so please be cautious when you come out here that have a realistic idea of how you're gonna make income and the old-fashioned having a skill like you know an electrician or being a mechanic or having a degree uh, having a skill in accounting things like that those are the things that pay money. They always will, always have been, and it will never change. And there is exceptions, but it's rare. And in the ones that have got these exceptions are preaching how cool it is to do all these little things like affiliate and stuff. And telling you that's what you should do to come out here and be an RVer. Not true. Not true. Uh, you need to really talk to people that are grounded um, the, and you got to realize, ask yourself, when you're watching these people, what are they going to look like 20 years from now? Is that how you want to look? I know you can't see the future, but you can pretty much guess what it's going to look like for people like that. So ask yourself, do you build your foundation now as you're young and have that foundation stay with you through your golden years? Or do you take that chance and 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 not so I, <laughs> i'm sorry but i gotta bring this stuff up and i hope if it makes one person go in the right direction where they have a very happy life then i've been successful so anyway this is getting the end of the show i'm sorry if it sounded a little preachy but it concerns me and i want you to make you you know just make you think about things so anyway Please, thank you so much for uh, subscribing. Make sure you uh, share our videos and share our podcasts. And uh, most of all, be safe out there. And please, become an RVer. You'll love it. Anyway, we'll see you next week in, in episode 68. See you next Monday. Bye. Thank you for watching our videos. Please take the time to subscribe and consider being a Patreon supporter. There is many more adventures and some big surprises coming in the future with your help. Thanks again.